What's up, guys? Welcome or welcome back to Michigan Muckraker. My name is Michelle. Today is the 24th of April, 2023, and a lot has happened in the last week in terms of the Goshen EV battery project that is maybe coming to just north of Big Rapids in Green Charter Township here in Michigan. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard that the Senate Appropriations Committee has voted 10 to 9 to give $170 million of our taxpayer dollars to Goshen to bribe them to buy Michigander land. And if that doesn't piss you off, I don't know what will. Uh, $125 million is going directly to the company to bribe them to buy our land. And $50 million is actually going to the right place so they can get the land ready. $50 million to get it ready. And we're going to see later on in the Senate meeting that I'm going to share with you and watch with you at the end of this video, that they don't know what's going to happen if the $50 million isn't all spent. Like, if there's any left over, where does that go? Does it go back into the SOAR fund? No answer, of course. Very shady. Uh, another shady thing that happened was the, the meeting on Thursday was actually a pop-up meeting. It was last minute. And to me, that was done. It's very logical. It was done so that um, the locals that are concerned that showed up on the 12th can't show up or didn't have enough time to make arrangements to show up to the Thursday meeting to voice their concerns. Because on the 12th, tons of people showed up but they weren't allowed to speak because it wasn't on the uh, agenda. So a pop-up meeting, Thursday, 1130, is when they voted. And I want to say thank you to the three Democrats that voted against giving the money to Goshen. Because this shouldn't be a partisan issue. But after we read all these articles, you might see why. I'm going to wait and do my little rant after I share these articles with you. But even this petition, you can see what I'm talking about here. This, again, shouldn't be partisan. It should concern all Michiganders because this is beautiful wetlands. This is up north. This is country that we're talking about putting a 1 million square foot battery plant on. And again, selling our land. So thank you for joining me today. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe, hit the like button, and um, the bell notification to be notified when I go live or post a video. We're going to jump in to the first article. Oh, first the petition. I'm going to show you this petition. Action alert. Tell Governor Whitmer to protect Michigan jobs, our environment, and our state security. They did mention the environment. Thank you. Goshen, a Chinese Communist Party, CCP, affiliated battery manufacturer, is proposing a 3 million square foot facility across multiple buildings on 500 acres in rural northwest Michigan. 3 million, I'm sorry, not 1 million, 3 million. Part of this deal was, which has largely been crafted in secret, which is another reason why we all hate it, includes the transfer of $175 million in SOAR funding, as well as hundreds of millions of dollars more in various incentives. All told, the project would receive over $800 million in combined cash and incentives. Again, government does not have money. They don't create money. They don't make money. They take it from taxpayers and spend it as they see fit. And now the taxpayers are saying we don't want this, and they voted in anyway. They vote to give our money away anyway. Every aspect of the proposed Goshen battery plant is concerning, and Michigan residents and lawmakers should take heed of the many risks this proposal presents. This shows the CCP, the company shall set up a party organization, and down here you can sign the petition. So I will have this link down in the description if you want to sign the petition. We all appreciate it. Uh, the Midwesterner posting up on April 19th that a recall has been launched against Green Charter Township Supervisor James Chapman over the CCP Goshen deal. Organizers say he's just the first township leader who will be subjected to a removal attempt. We are just beginning, guys. The fight is not over. They may have approved the funding, but it's not over till it's over. And there is several avenues that, of approach that we can take in order to still stop this, and we're going to keep trying. So do not give up. Keep 
um, emailing, sending letters, uh, calling your representatives, and let them know how you feel about this and what your worries are, and be polite and courteous, but be clear and concise, okay? A recall petition has filed against Green Charter Township Supervisor James Chapman over his attempt to bring a Chinese Communist Party-linked battery company to the Macosta County community. The Midwesterner obtained a copy of the petition which, which states Chapman should be recalled from office because of his support for a resolution to bring a 3 million square foot facility by Goshen High Tech to the rural community. Because James Chapman voted yes to approve a resolution by the Township Board of the Township at a special meeting held on the 13th day of December 2022 entitled the Charter Township of Green County of Macosta Resolution a resolution to support Goshen Inc. and their bringing their industrial project to Green Charter Township. The petition language was filed by Macosta County Clerk Marcel, sorry, Marcy Purcell on Tuesday. Organizers tell the Midwesterner that Chapman is the is just the first township leader who will be subjected to a recall attempt. And I'm not gonna lie, the Senate Appropriations Committee, those people should be recalled as well. And we'll get into that. I don't. They did not do their due diligence, even though they paused for what just over a week to investigate. What Senator Anthony said was kind of insulting, actually. Um, a point of privilege. But again, we'll get into that. The county is required to hold a clarity hearing within 20 days within 20 business days, to review the language of the recall petition for accuracy. If it is approved, organizers will be able to collect signatures to force a recall vote on Chapman. I want to know that if there is a recall going on, can he still create his planning commission? Because he has put in a motion to make a, a Green Charter Township a master plan for Green Charter Township for planning um, or developmental like urban development or whatever development sorry so can he still hire those people if he's in recall like i would like to know that chapman's behavior during the secretive process along with trustee dale jernstadt has roiled the community with an attendee attempted to ask a question before a hastily arranged friday morning meeting chapman snapped okay we've seen that at another meeting, which was forced outside due to a large number of residents who attended, Jernstadt appeared to mutter an explicit, uh, you know, something that he shouldn't have said, okay? Especially because she's not, she's not a bitch. You just don't like what she's saying. And that, that's not very professional. Let's just say that. Another one from the Midwesterner, I'm not going to go on this entire thing, but this is important because the the justification for the democrats voting yes has to do with the jobs of course because that's the only thing that's positive is the supposed 2350 jobs that are supposed to be high paying jobs but the midwesterner accurately calls out that the ccp promised big rapids plant pay scheme evolves downward 61000 annually to 45000 and this was quoted right here the Green Charter Township Supervisor said wages would average $52,000 per year at one of the meetings. And uh, the figure dropped again in the Epoch Times. It was his understanding that starting pay at the new factory would be $45,000 a year. Now, that would make complete sense because in this area, it's about $47,000. So it's even under. About $47,000 is that average for this area. And so, to me, <laughs> this company, China, wanted cheap labor, cheap American labor. That's why they put it out here. Along with, of course, all the natural resources and the space. This is up north, man. This is beautiful land. We don't want this here. And not for $45,000 a year jobs. That you have to wear special clothes because it's so dangerous with all the chemicals. I mean, it's a chemical plant on a watershed to the Muskegon River. That's that's what we need to focus on. China is a concern, but you're going to see every single article, it's China, 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 China. That makes it partisan. I'd, 
I can't stress that enough. I'm not going to rant yet, but 45000 a year. Is that a good paying job when you have to wear special clothes, when it's a dangerous job? 45000 I mean, again, it's because they wanted cheap labor. It's insulting, and yet you're going to say this is good, good paying jobs. Michigan Senate narrowly clears $175 million for China Lake to Goshen plant. See the title? China Lake. It's China, China, China. Again, when I first uh, got into this, I first figured out what was going on. Back at the end of February, uh, I made a flyer. And on the flyer, the three main concerns, there was three. Not just one. That's every news article. It's, they're talking about one majority of the time. And that is China. But there's two other ones. And that's fire. How about fire? Uh, it's, our fire stations do not get near enough money. They're not bolstered enough. It's all a part of this Agenda 21 crap. Our, our parks and our fire, they're just decaying. And yet you want to put this huge plant in here. And the other one, of course, is environmental. If a fire does happen... All of those chemicals will be in the air. Everywhere around the area will be at risk. So one side out of three, that's what the news is telling you. They omit things. They, they might not outright lie, but they omit. That's what we need to understand about all these news articles. Sorry, I said I'd try to get the rant after I go over these articles and and here I am ranting. April 20th, state funding for a controversial $2.3 billion electric vehicle factory narrowly passed its hurdle on Thursday, with the Senate Appropriations Committee approving the transfer of $175 million to support Goshen. With the move, the state is now funding a portion of four EV battery. Okay. While incentives began with popular support, Thursday's 10-9 committee vote underscores a growing bipartisan discomfort with promoting companies ties to China and with the state's incentive system. With three Democrats, Jeff Irwin of Ann Arbor, Rosemary Bayer of Kego Harbor, and Sylvia Santana of Detroit, joining the six Republicans on the committee and opposing the Goshen deal. Thank you again to those people. Uh, if you have time, it would be great to show your appreciation, send them an email, and tell them thank you for voting with the people. Because 19 people showed up for the pop-up meeting and of those 19 i think all of them because chuck thelen was there so of course he's for the plant but 19 people i believe are all said no if not 18 but you know what i mean close to 20 people rallied up drove two hours down to lansing thank you to those people and i'm gonna say thank you a lot when we watch the video because man all of them did a wonderful job and taking the time to go down there and voice the concerns of the people of this area is amazing. A win is a win, and economic developers praised the once-in-a-century opportunity that the large-scale investment with its estimated 2,350 jobs brings to a region that Appropriations Chair Sarah Anthony from Lansing described as one of the poorest communities in the state, which is, again, why, you want to, why China wants to put their plant there. Critics, including nearly 20 people who urged the community, sorry, the committee to deny the funding, either in person or on submitted forms, warned of potential environmental damage from the 3 million square foot battery plant facility and feared national security threats due to Goshen Inc. parent company's connection to the CCP. So you mentioned it, so that's good, but the title and everything else, it's China. Thursday's committee action fulfills the offer to Goshen from the Senate Strategic Outreach and Attraction Reserve Fund for large-scale projects, Anthony said, and also meets Governor Gretchen Whitmer's goal of bringing jobs to economically depressed areas of the state. S big government. This is the problem with centralized big government. When they take our money and they spend it on things that we don't even want, and they say, this is for your own good. Don't you want these jobs here? We, we think that you do, even though you're saying that you don't. Even though the area, the businesses that are already in the area are having a hard time finding workers. And you're going to bring in something that's not going to help. It's going to crush these small businesses. Anyway, the committee considered those aspects in addition to concerns raised about the company's ownership before a majority of Democrats approved the funding, she said. 
considered those aspects. So they consider the aspects of Whitmer's goal and uh, company, the ownership, but they didn't consider the environmental impacts. Now, here's another thing. Obviously, the Green New Deal and the green mass, the green industry, that's all Democrats as well. Not all Democrats, obviously, but on the Democratic side, they're the ones pushing this. So perhaps that's why they don't want to talk about environmental impacts. They don't want you to understand how dangerous lithium is, how terrible it is to be a part of that supply chain that's destroying poor countries like Brazil, Argentina, now Nevada. It's going to start destroying Nevada. You don't want to talk about that either. So maybe that's why they avoid talking about the environmental impacts. You don't want to admit how dangerous it is. It is a point of privilege for in individuals to say that good paying jobs for a very rural, very low income area should not be considered with that kind of due diligence, Anthony said. A point of privilege. Really? Majority of these people are we are the poor people living in this area and we say we don't want this how how are we coming from a point of privilege when you live in lansing it, that really bugs me this this privilege shit the funding is a legacy of the former republican led legislator which did not address the award promised to goshen inc last october before the new democratic legislative leadership took office in january Anthony and other Democrats said they plan to make changes to the state's incentive offerings, though they've released no details. Yeah, and they probably won't because it's very secretive, centralized government that we have here in Michigan, in case you didn't notice. The vote releases the $175 million to the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, which oversees the SOAR fund. Of that, $125 million will be grant will be a grant to Goshen after, after the factory is operating. Yeah, here you go. Thank you. Here's $125 million of taxpayer dollars. Thanks for buying the land from us. What sense does this make? Well, $50 million will go to the right place, Economic Development Group, for site preparation. Yeah. And bribery. I, that's alleged. That's just um, speculation, of course. Allegedly, I want to say. While parent company Goshen High Tech was founded in China and operates under rules that align with businesses with the Communist Party, Goshen Inc. operates in the U.S. as a wholly owned subsidiary with no connection to communism, said Chuck Thelen, Goshen vice president. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, we're supposed to trust his word. He works for the company in question, but that's who we trust. He told the Senate committee on Thursday the company's filing through the Federal Committee of Foreign Investment in the United States for an un undisclosed company facility in another state requires no further review. The company also voluntarily sought a review for the Big Rapids area project in Green Charter Township and expects a similar outcome. Two public officials were the only ones to speak in favor of the project Thursday. Jim Chapman, supervisor of Green Township, and Geraldine Strong, chair of Macosta County Board of Commission Commissioners. I need to look into this individual. I wonder if they're part of the right place or the Michigan Economic Development Corporation as well. Expected to pay for up to 2,350 workers is important, they said. Starting wages should be around $24 an hour, about $50,000 per year. Yeah, can't get a clear answer on how much the average wage will be. Plus benefits. Oh, Thelen told Bridge recently. The local officials also insisted that Goshen has addressed all concerns raised about its company and potential operations in the township. Huh. It's, it's addressed all the concerns? What about these secretive ingredients? What about the fire hazards? You haven't addressed any of those concerns. How about the security that you're supposedly going to bring in? Who's going to do the security for it? Like, that's a straight out lie. The project, Strong said, is a great opportunity for the people in Macosta County and the surrounding area. I believe this project will be critical to the future of our region and our state. Yeah, uh, it is. For the globalist freaking agenda, it is a very important state. Michigan is huge for this electrification of the United States. And that's not a good thing. But it was opponents who filled the hearing room where Senate committee members arrived to find notes at their seats urging a no vote. 
Speakers asked the committee to delay the vote until more information could be gathered on, the, on Goshen. Geopolitical concerns were top of mind. Again, untrue. The only reason why that it keeps happening is because the Republicans have come to help us. And I appreciate the Republicans' help. But they're the ones that are more concerned about China. Obviously, the Democrats, whether you agree with it or not, they are okay with China. So going at it from that angle, you're alienating half of the people of this state when it shouldn't be like that. It's all of our taxpayer dollars going to something that could environmentally impact up north where people go camping. That should be the focus, not the Chinese connection, because that means they can just say, oh, well, the geopolitical concerns are nothing. These are great paying jobs. Our own president is using sh sanctions against Russia because economics is a weapon, said Big Rapids area resident Larry Fink Finkbeiner. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Money leaving this project going home to China is a weapon. While some Democrats join Republicans against the transfer, their reasons differed. If we are going to directly subsidize development, it should be for jobs that provide a thriving wage. Who has been against incentives, told Bridge after the vote. Good. Yeah, incentives are terrible. You know how you incentivize businesses to come here? Lower taxes. Pretty easy. Lower taxes. Instead of raising taxes and then the government, the centralized power, picks and chooses winners and says, oh, EV, that's what we want here, even though we didn't vote for EV, we didn't vote for that. Opposition from legislators who represent the Big Rapids area was a factor as well. If they don't want state investment, it seems odd to push it on them. Thank you. That is especially true when we have more important economic development priorities that are desperate for investment, such as transportation. Yeah, how about we fix our, f fix our damn roads, okay? How about that? Keep saying it, but our roads are the worst in the country. I've been all over, even Mississippi has better roads. No offense to any Mississippians. I lived there for a while. I'm just saying that they are one of the poorest states and even they have better roads. The company's origin in China was a factor for Sen Senator John DeMoose, Harbor Springs, to vote against the transfer. While a supporter of rebuilding manufacturing in Michigan, DeMoose said he's uncomfortable with statements from the Chinese government that they expect more conflict with the United States. This is a matter of national security. He's not against all ties to China, he said, since many companies already are based in Michigan. However, DeMoose said, we need to be smart in terms of who we give money to going forward. Both Democrat and Republican Party leaders also weighed in on the vote. Extremists in the Michigan GOP have spent weeks promoting baseless conspiracies that only work to block the thousands of good-paying American jobs Goshen plans to bring to our state. Michigan Democratic Party Chair Lavora Barnes said in a statement, calling the effort scare tactics. Well, this person needs to be one of the first to be recalled, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> conspiracy theories, you know. It's a it's a running joke uh, on the, the channels I watch, but conspiracy theory is just spoiler alert. Okay, spoiler alert. The reality is that projects like this one will create financial opportunities for our residents in Big Rapids who are looking to provide for their families. Christina Caramo, chair of Michigan Republican Party, spoke against the project in the hearing and again to reporters after the vote when she said the state should not accept Chinese investment. It's unbelievable that we're here at this moment considering giving millions to Goshen, Caramo said. A yes vote on the transfer, she said, would mean you are a traitor to this republic, she told the committee. Meanwhile, Tudor Dixon, a Republican who ran against Whitmer in the 2022 race, first raised questions about the state giving incentive funds to Goshen during the campaign last fall. On Thursday after the vote, she reiterated her stance against the project. So, Republicans are against the project, as we, of course, know. And, again, I'm thankful for them helping. But their focus on China has made this an issue with the Democrats, and it shouldn't be that way. This is a massive slap to local residents who adamantly oppose the project, Dick Dixon said. It is. Among them is Marjorie, sorry, Marjorie Steele, a resident of Grant Township 
east of the proposed factory who vowed ongoing grassroots opposition, including recalls. A petition has been filed against Chapman and Steel Submarines in initiatives are expected. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is the woman who wrote that amazing article, opinion article, in the Big Rapids Pioneer, um, saying that she came home to the Shire and found uh, Sauron. Not Saruman. Oh, I should know. Those two confuse me. Found the enemy in the Shire, screwing everything up. And in the books, you don't see it in the movies, but in the books, it's actually communism. It's a, a bunch of people come into the Shire and take all the resources from the hobbits who actually do all the work. So anyway, I'm getting off track here. Thank you very much for everything that you're doing, Marjorie. You are amazing. And we're going to see her speak out at the meeting. And it's, it's amazing what she's doing. She is doing wonderful things for this community. And I thank her and everybody, again, everybody who went and talked to the committee. You're very much appreciated. This is not just Macosta County. This is a community effort to stop not just this project, but to stop all of these ill-vetted EV battery, battery projects that are being forced on pristine rural communities across the state. Absolutely. Other battery production sites are in development in Delta Township, where a General Motors partnership with LG Energy Solutions of South Korea is building a, a cells factory, and in Marshall, where Ford Motor Company plans to build an assembly plant with licensed technology from partner Contemporary Amperex Technology Limited of China. With the Goshen vote, we are optimistic for Michigan's continued preeminence in EV and all other forms of mobility, Messer said. That's the Michigan Economic Development Corporation CEO. They cheer the investment in large-scale battery factories for their jobs and also to keep the newer developments in the automotive industry within the state. You know, I'm not for this, but if you really, really want this stupid battery plant, then put it in Detroit or Lansing or Kalamazoo, okay? where there's already a bunch of dirty industry. Don't put it in the middle of pristine forest wetlands. It makes no sense. But again, that's just, if you really need to have this, which electric vehicles, the supply chain. Listen, electric vehicle, when you buy it, it's a service. You no longer are buying a product. You're buying a service. And if you if you understand what that means, it means <laughs> if you say something that, let's say you buy a Ford EV, you say something against Ford and they don't like it. Well, they could just say, oh, you don't get heated seats anymore. Boop, cut that off remotely. Or you can't roll your windows down anymore. I know that sounds crazy potentially, but you, again, the military taught me three things, three little sayings that I will never forget. It taught me more than three things, but three sayings. Uh, work smarter, not harder. Hurry up and wait. And, um, sorry, my mom is, I don't know if you can hear the garbage can moving up. She's trying to be helpful. But um, the third thing is prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And I got sidetracked and I lost what I was saying. But those are the three sayings, and the worst that could happen, unfortunately, is environmental concerns from where I sit. I had a point, but I lost it. Um, it's our job as the Big Rapids community to fix the entire automotive industry. It's not our job, sorry. It's not our job as the Big Rapids community to fix the entire automotive industry. In addition to the $175 million approved on Thursday, Goshen Inc. also received a $540 million 30-year tax break last fall from the Senate incentives worth about $38 million from Consumers Energy. The project now will proceed under regular permitting, such as through the township for the site plan and state environment regulations for systems like water and any chemicals on site. After the Goshen funding is dispersed, $526 million remains in the SOAR fund reserves. Oh, so I'm not going to go over this entire thing, but 13 on your side, operation, operation, opportunity of a generation, Goshen Battery Plant approved. You can see where they stand. They, they are for this opportunity. 
and they go on to basically uh, look at Randy Thelen. We are excited to see this once in a lifetime, once in a century opportunity for the Big Rapids area moving forward, said Randy Thelen, president and CEO of The Right Place, Inc. The Goshen facility will bring thousands of good paying jobs to the community and propel the region into the forefront of EV manufacturing. We look forward to working collaboratively with state and local leaders as this incredible opportunity becomes a reality. And they showcase that. Macosta County officials released statements Thursday afternoon that they approved the funding. This is a pivotal moment for Macosta County residents, small businesses, and communities, said Karen Hahn, Macosta County Register of Deeds. Final state approval of Goshen's investment will bring economic vibrancy, electric vehicles, battery components, supply chains, and good paying jobs to right here in Macosta County. Thanks to our strong partnership with state officials, we are ready to build a bright future for Macosta County residents. <sighs> state approved Goshen transformative $2.3 billion investment demonstrates Macosta County is a great place to invest, said Geraldine Strong, chair of Macosta County Board of Commissioners. As the gateway to the north, we are more than just a great place to enjoy Michigan's outdoors. Well, if this plant gets put in, it ain't going to be that. You're going to have to go farther up north to actually get to country. We will be the epicenter of the future of American manufacturing, building thriving communities, and creating good-paying American jobs you can raise a family on. Let's keep investing in Macosta County families, small businesses, and residents. It's such a lie. These are not good-paying jobs. And, you know, majority of people out here, they will drive an hour into work because they want to live in the country. We don't want to live in the city, otherwise we would. The 13 on your side, oh, teacher of 13 on your side. Uh, I'm not a fan, if you haven't noticed. Uh, Pioneer, another one that is obviously on Team Goshen. Uh, lawmakers vote yes to move $175 million for a Goshen battery plant. Project will move full speed ahead. Let's see. Glean anything out of here. Pretty much saying the same thing. Oh, here. Today, we take another monumental step forward on our journey to bring thousands of good-paying jobs to the Big Rapids area, Chapman said. Not only are we excited about the 2,300 good-paying jobs that will be created, but this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity will make a substantial positive impact for our residents and small businesses for decades to come. Our restaurants will have more diners. Our grocery stores will have more shoppers. Our local businesses will have more customers. Our families will have more good paying jobs and our schools will have better funding. This is a truly historic day for the Big Rapids area. You have heard, this is from the Macosta County Commission Chairperson. Geraldine Strong, once again, you have heard from a small but vocal group of opponents, all of whom think they speak for our county. They do not, Strong said. I have talked to people throughout Macosta County and asked them if they have any objections to the Goshen plant, and I have not had one negative comment made to me. Now, do you believe that? I, I don't know if I believe that. But even if that's true, how many people did she talk to? Who exactly did she talk to? Did they know anything about it? Like, your statement means nothing. It has no substance. None. So even if you're telling the truth, you could have just said, you could have talked to one person. You could have talked to two people, and they had no idea about it. You're just, yeah, it says nothing. Bunch of words, salad bowl. Strong went on to say the project is a great opportunity for the people of Macosta County and the surrounding area. It will create 2,350 good jobs, better wages, and benefits that will give families a chance for a better living in general, not only now, but for generations, Strong said. This will also lead to 5,000 plus additional jobs statewide in the supply chain and service professions. Additionally, the project will lead to significant opportunities for participation in cutting-edge technology for our local schools, our intermediate school district, and Fair State University, which is in Big Rapids. 5,000 additional jobs supply chain. And that's another thing. All of these chemicals will be in trucks, and those trucks will have to go on icy roads in the winter. It's just all dangerous. The project will be critical to future economy of our region and of our state. Our community needs the economic growth. Our children, our grandchildren, and beyond will benefit from this project. 
Goshen, North America Vice President Chuck Fallon said previously, if the Senate Appropriations Committee voted to release the funding, the project will be full speed ahead. Yep. Senator Roger Hawk from Isabella County said in a news release following, following the vote, over the past few months, he has tried to support the proposed project in Big Rapids because of the promise to bring over 2,000 good paying jobs. He knows how transformative a project of this magnitude can be for a community and the opportunities it brings for area families but he has begun to have reservations. You know, nobody in any of these articles are talking about automation and AI. It's happening right now in Holland. The automation facilities in, in Holland have doubled their productivity over the last year alone. And AI has just become public in the last six months. We have no idea if those jobs are gonna be here at 2031 when they're supposed to be promised to be fulfilled. We have no idea. Nobody's saying that. And in my mind, these jobs being um, dangerous, people are going to want it to be automated. So then we're going to have this huge million square foot, sorry, three million square foot battery plant that nobody save a couple AI people, you know, let's say 50, 60 people. Nobody works there. It's just all automation. And so now you have a chemical plant on our river with no jobs. That's a very, that's a potential. Again, prepare for the worst. That's the worst case scenario. And uh, obviously besides a fire happening and, and that sort of thing. What I've seen over the past few months has been an outright community relations disaster by this company that leaves legitimate questions on their ability to gain the trust and support of our state and local community. This is not the way that partnerships should work, and it's hard for me to support a project when there is a fundamental lack of trust between the company and the community, especially when our tax dollars are at stake. Yeah, yeah. Michiganders are paying for something they don't want, and we are saying we don't want it, and they don't care. Representative Tom Kunzi, it's probably wrong, sorry, said initially he was all for the project because of the project because of the prospect of new jobs being created. However, as more concerns from the residents were brought forward, his support has declined. I did contact Jim Chapman and tell him I can no longer support it because there are too many questions. We need more information before we can move forward. He added, with the Senate Appropriations Committee voting in favor of the funding, that if all the other issues can be satisfied, he will support it. McDonald Rivet explained why, as a member of the Appropriations Committee, she voted in favor of the funding for Goshen. Political games and politics should never get in the way of people's jobs. Our office was inundated with messages from local residents asking us to approve this transfer, McDonald Rivet said. Responsible people at local, state, and federal levels have done their due diligence. There are facts and there are fabrications. Misinformation and baseless claims might serve the politicians spreading them, but they don't serve people looking for better. They don't offer opportunities or solutions to people who really need them. What Michigan needs most are family-sustaining jobs. It's my responsibility to do everything I can to make that happen. Uh, sorry, but I think that this person is another one. Kristen McDonald Rivet. Recall. Recall. Because you're not paying attention. The grassroots movement started this the locals started this voicing their concerns and the republicans came and listened to their constituents and they said we'll help you now again they are making it more about china and i'm not criticizing it's just a fact they are concerned about china democrats or not but to say that there are fabrications and there are facts <laughs> You're the one with fabrications, and we're the ones with facts. Michigan Dems, Goshen allegations are GOP scare tactics. Pretty much everything I've already said is in here, so I'm not going to go over it. But this one quote, the reality is that projects like this one will create financial opportunities for residents in Big Rapids who are looking to provide for their families and put down roots, Barnes said. These racially motivated attacks on Goshen hurt the same communities that these members claim to represent and advocate for, and Michiganders will see through them. Don't fall for GOP scare tactics. For the sake of the Michigan economy, I urge every member to vote yes today. 
That was the Democratic Party chair, Lavara Barnes. Remember that. Because racially motivated attacks, that's where, that's where they're going with this. It has nothing to do with the Chinese people. It has everything to do with the Chinese government, okay? It's disingenuous, to say the least. Recall. That's what I say. Recall. Um, I think this this one is the exact same thing. Um, there was a quote in here. Yes, right here. A lot of us are getting that feeling that, you know, we're not being heard, Finkbeiner said. And we are being ignored. And to just go ahead and push it in because it'll bring jobs. It'll also bring nightmare. I wanted to quote that because it's it's damn true. It will also bring nightmare. China, this is a Chinese website right here. And despite outcry, Michigan approves U.S. $175 million for Chinese-owned EV battery plant. Um, at the hearing, Chuck Thelen, the president, the vice president, sorry, um, the president is Chen Li, a World Economic Forum Young Global Leader, and CCP. Um, North America Operations announced that the company had received clearance from the Committee of Foreign Investment in the United States, an interagency federal panel that reviews transactions involving foreign investments. The committee determined that our proposed transaction was not subject to further review, and we may proceed with the proposed transaction. Hmm. I don't have it here. I will try to share it. I should have looked into it. Um, but I saw something about the CIFAS couldn't go through because of so much secrecy from the company. They wouldn't answer questions. But again, I don't have the article pulled up, so I will try to get that article. And I'll try to even put it in the description down below. Macosta County Green Township respond to vote to fund Goshen EV Battery Factory. Project will now move forward with permitting and site plan reviews. With the approval to release the funding, they express... The support of the project proceeding. Goshen, North America. Chuck Thelen, who is a, who is a resident of Macosta County, for now, he's here to get this project in place. Will he stay once it's done? Who knows? Whose idea it was to bring the Goshen facility to the area, said he is glad to see that the funding was approved for release. I would have liked to have more votes in the affirmative, but a win is a win, Thelen said. I hope to prove everybody wrong in the few, very near future as to how we are going to do this the right way. <sighs> I would have liked to have more votes in the affirmative. Thelen said the next step is to get the information to the Goshen leadership team and get the final approval to transfer funds from the European location to the United States location to execute the next phases. We will be re-engaging with EGLE. We worked with them for many months, and now we need to file our site plans with them to get the permits to start moving Earth. We are going through the permitting process and are hiring additional environmental consultants to ensure that everything we do is favorable. I don't want any issues that happen based on the design details. Again, I've mentioned this in several articles, but I can't help it. Eagle, that's just an arm of the centralized power. It basically says what can and cannot be developed. It is bull. Mich uh, M. I. Gardner, a uh, resident of, of Michigan, a Michigander, wanted to build a greenhouse next to a mire. So there's already development. And Eagle said you couldn't because it was wetlands because of a ditch. Miles and miles and miles of ditch that led to the uh, big lake. A ditch. And now, this is real wetlands we're talking about. If you go to that area, there's wildlife there. There is trees. It's beautiful. It's real wetland. And Eagle is going to decimate all that. It's going to approve decimating all that to put a freaking chemical plant on our watershed. It drives me nuts, guys. It drives me absolutely nuts. Because you can see that it's a lie. It, that, that Eagle pretends to care about the environment. But really, it's just so that it can be a gatekeeper of development for big government. He added the site plans will also get go to the local township officials for approval of building placement and other details. Additionally, 
They will need local approval for any requests for rezoning of property. Again, there's a planning commission that is being built now for Green Charter Township. They have to create a master plan. I have been looking into this. I want to do a video about it once I get all the information together and understand it fully myself and how to present it. But it's something we need to worry about. If, no, when Chapman is recalled, we need to make sure that we put people on the board that understand sustainable development, okay? They need to be able to understand United Nations Agenda 21, 2030, because that is what's happening here. It's development, sustainable development. And so we don't want to be blindsided and have somebody else put in that will be for the Michigan Economic Development Corporation centralized power. And we need to understand that the master plan, the master master plan that all master plans are created upon is the Agenda 21 Sustainable Development Plan. Most of the property is already zoned industrial. I would say about 70%. But there are some parcels on the east side of 220th Avenue that we will need to request rezoning, Thelen said. However, most of our building will be planned for the west side of 220th for this first phase. Thelen said they will also start meeting with Michigan Department of Transportation regarding road improvements, making sure they have the information they need to determine what improvements will be needed to be done, including numbers of trucks and truck weight that will be coming in and out of the area. We already have an estimate, an estimate. God save the flag says, did you read Macosta County's master plan 2014? This project isn't in it. No, I have not. I will look into it. Thank you. I always appreciate a lead. Always. And thank you for joining me, by the way. We have already estimate, we already have an estimate of around $20 million that will be required for the infrastructure improvements, which was accommodated in the funds that were appropriated today, he said. That money goes to the right place for disbursement. Some of it will go toward land purchase. Some will go toward road improvements. A lot of the money appropriated today goes to the county and the township for infrastructure improvements. So $20 million, so that's $30 million unaccounted for so far. And again, who knows? Did it go to bribing people? Who knows? Will we ever know where all that money went? We probably will have to beg with a FOIA request, and then half of it will be redacted anyway. We have a big secret government taking all our money and spending it how they want. Don't you love it? $2.3 billion investment. Green Charter Township Supervisor released a statement saying they look forward to breaking ground on the largest single business investment in Macosta County history. You know, that's probably why, uh, one of the reasons, there's many reasons why Green Charter Township wants to have their own master plan. But you're probably onto something there, God save the flag. It probably has something to do with, it's not in that master plan for the Macosta County. So now we're going to do this new master plan with Green Charter Township. And it'll be in there. And we need to, well, we need to be vigilant on what exactly is in that plan. For sure. The company's $2.36 billion investment is the largest investment ever in the Big Rapids area and will create over $11.5 in new personal income as a result. Prove it. I mean, like, you could just pull numbers out of your ass. <laughs> That's how I feel. Like, where do you get that number? And how, like, how can you ordain the future? Today, we take another monumental step to forward on our journey to bring thousands of good-paying jobs to the Big Rapids area. You know, pause. You see how they keep saying good paying, good paying, good paying, good paying? Like they, they want to brainwash you? Like these are good paying jobs. Believe me. And this is all about China. Believe me. It's not about fire or environmental or any other. It's just about China. And it's about the Republicans versus Democrats. The news is so full of shit. You have to separate the truth from the trash. Not only are we excited about the 2,300 good paying jobs that will be created, <laughs> but this once in a lifetime opportunity will make a substantial positive impact for our residents and small businesses for decades to come. This is truly an historic day for the Big Rapids area. <laughs> he said it twice in the same paragraph, good paying, good paying. Hey, they're good paying jobs. 
Believe me. That was me trying to be a snake, in case that didn't come through, right? In a news release, Macosta County officials said they celebrate the state's final approval for the transformative investment by the global battery company Goshen, which has chosen to build a new electric vehicle battery component manufacturing facility in Macosta County. This is a pivotal moment for Macosta County residents, small businesses, and communities. Macosta County Register of Deeds, Karen Hahn said, Final state approval for Goshen's investment will bring economic vibrancy, electric vehicle component supply chains, and good paying jobs right here in Macosta County. Thanks to our strong partnership with state officials, we are ready to build a bright future for Macosta County residents. Going all the way back, I remember now what I was talking about when I was saying prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. The worst thing that could happen with a vehicle as a service rather than a product is that you say something that Ford or our government doesn't like or whatever company you buy it from and they just turn your vehicle off. Like, they could do that remotely with an electric vehicle. Do you see how much power that puts in the hands of big business and big corporations who are working together as we speak with these public-private partnerships? It's way too much power. I would probably not have a working vehicle because I am talking about what I'm talking about. So, as the gateway to the north, I will never have an electric vehicle. I will never have one. In fact, I want to go all the way back. I want a vehicle that has no technology whatsoever so that my family, who knows how to work on vehicles, can work on it. That's what I would like. Because that vehicle is a product. You buy it, and you have all the features already in it, and they can't be taken away from you. An electric vehicle is not that way. It's a service. And that is that they want a service economy, a software economy. Because that's controllable. As the gateway to the north, we are more than just a great place to enjoy Michigan outdoors. We will be the epicenter of the future of American manufacturing building thriving communities and creating good paying jobs. American jobs you can raise a family on. Let's keep investing. In. I already said that one. I'm sorry. I'm repeating, but yes, an epicenter of the future. Do we want to be that? I thought we wanted to be up north where we go tubing down the river and go camping and go hiking and go biking and boating. Like I thought that's what this area was. This is up north, man. This is heaven. Commissioner William Routley, whose district includes Big Rapids Township and Big Rapids, said this is a good thing for the community and most of the people in this in his district, as far as he can tell, are in favor of the project. What does that mean, as far as you can tell? Have you done your due diligence? Have you done surveys? Because the people that are opposed have. They have gone knocking on doors and asking people what they think. A majority of people didn't even know about it in Green Township. So you're just saying whatever for Team Goshen. You don't have any facts to back you up. A community either moves forward or it moves backward. Routley said, if we don't do something progressive, <laughs> then we are not doing our due diligence. We are elected to take care of this community and help to improve it. And I think a modern state of the art factory that provides good paying jobs is a good thing progressive do we must we got to keep going forward we got to be progressive we got to keep it's this progressive shit is a fallacy okay and it doesn't mean that we don't want jobs here how about we have recreational jobs let's figure out how we can bring maybe a uh, more touristy but again recreational and and one with nature let's find jobs that are one with nature and i know they're out there he added that if nothing is done in the next 20 years, small businesses will be gone because there will be nothing left to keep them going. I am definitely in favor of them coming. I have confidence the people involved that are working on this are doing their due diligence, he said. With Eagle and OSHA and other government agencies that are responsible for monitoring the setup and the safety precautions, I am confident this is going to be safe. The LG factory in Holland is a good example of what it can be like. This is a good thing. I've said it in another video, but somebody that worked at Holland said, 
if there's if anything happened, any accident, everybody would be dead in Holland. And I, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but that's the worst case scenario. Everyone would be dead. That's that is the risk that we are inviting here if we let this plant come. I have given my whole life to this community, Rutley said. I was born and raised here. I was educated here. I taught here. All my kids have gone to Ferris and my grandkids have gone there. I love it, the community, and I wouldn't do anything that is going to ruin it. Games and politics. Political games and politics should never get in the way of people's jobs. Okay, yeah. Responsible people at local, state, federal levels have done their due diligence. Okay, there are facts and fabrications, misinformation. Okay, I've said that one already. Big Rapids Township Clerk Hannah Sayers, who addressed the Senate Appropriations Committee prior to the vote, said even though the vote passed, even that loss was a victory because they were able to bring their facts and concerns to the table. And I am going to uh, show them. I'm going to watch them with you here in just a minute. Three Democrats voted with us, opposed to this project because they're wise enough to realize it's not a partisan issue. Ten to nine was much closer than anyone anticipated. Saya said, this is not nearly over. Mostly, I'd like to point out that Chair Senator An Sarah Anthony believes this will produce good-paying jobs to the area. May I remind everyone that Chuck Thelen is now quoted from the original promise of a $60,000 average annual wage to now $45,000 wage average annual wage. Mere dollars over what our local employers and factories are already paying employees here. And again, they can't find people to work for those for the for that price. So that's just going to accelerate automation if they can't find jobs for the plant. It it won't shut the plant down. The average salary in the US for 2023 is fifty eight thousand five hundred and sixty three dollars, she continued. The American company Arnex Energy, also awarded SOAR funding to produce EV batteries, has already committed to a seventy two thousand dollar annual salary. A project like this would have much more support if it stuck to its original promises and actually offered a competitive, livable wage. That has not happened this far. Good job. Okay, I don't know why we go up. Um, this is just a warning. I am going to go over this article in a different video, but most of Michigan's 24,000 contaminated sites await cleanup that might never come. This was in 2020. 24,000 contaminated sites in Michigan that have not been cleaned up. That could happen. Hundreds protest Chinese factory project in Michigan. Okay, so I went to the rally Saturday, April 22nd of this year, obviously, 2023, and um, yeah, hundreds of people, I would say maybe 500 or just under showed up, even though it was 40 degrees, cold, rainy, unfortunately crappy weather. I really wish the sun would have come out for us, but I was there. I did live stream it. Uh, thank you to all the speakers. Uh, the Midwesterner also live streamed it and I'm not going to lie. He's got better equipment now. No shade on him. I appreciate everything that he's doing, uh, covering the stories for the community, and I appreciate his awesome equipment. Uh, he is linked to Tudor Dixon, and so he has a little bit of help, which is awesome. And again, I'm glad for what he's doing, but he is also talking a lot about China more than environment, and I don't like that. And so I'm going to be fair, and I'm going to call out all of these news News Nation now is no better. In fact, they're one of the worst. It's all about China. Hundreds protest Chinese factory. Okay. The speakers, thank you. They all did excellent. The wind was terrible. Cold was terrible. I recommend that you watch the video, either my live stream or the Midwesterners live stream. And because all the rest left, by the way. Wood TV8 was there for a little while, and WZZM13, I didn't even see, but I'm sure it was there for a little while, but they did not stay for very long. The Midwesterner was there the whole time, so. Um, this really, hundreds of protesters in northern Michigan rallied 
to push back against the construction of electric vehicle battery plant by the Chinese-owned company Goshen due to fears of national security risks. Xi Jinping has put himself in charge of military civil fusions that basically says that anything business related in China has military implications and they reserve the right to extract the information. So it really puts all the per uh, partnerships into question, said U.S. Rep. John Molinar. Uh, Christina Caramo was one of the many speakers on Saturday's protest, asking how many abuses have we seen over the years from China, and to think that they will set up a battery factory in our state and they will just play by the rules. That makes no sense whatsoever. You see, they're just talking about China. There were speakers there that were talking about environment. In fact, thankfully, majority of the speakers were talking about the environmental impacts that are possible with this plant. So thank you to them. Uh, I don't really think News Nation now covered it very well, but just my opinion. Hundreds rally. Uh, M Live is trash. We all know this, hopefully. But again, truth can be found even in trash. Hundreds rally at Michigan Horse Farm to oppose Goshen Battery Plant. And this is where I got the awesome picture. Go home, Goshen. The farm, the majestic, the Frisian Majestic Horse Farm. I probably said that backwards. It was beautiful. And I'm really saddened to see this happening to this area. When you look from where the farm sits and you look out, it's just gorgeous. Trees, nature, beautiful, peaceful, clean, it smells so good out there. It smells so good. When it rains, it's wonderful. Rain drizzled as hundreds of people gathered at a horse farm Saturday to rally against a proposed battery parts plant. Uh, signs declaring no-go on Goshen. Don't sell us to China and keep green township green died of the crowd. Goats named Chip and Charlie wore blankets that said, Go home or goat home Goshen. A black stallion trotted behind a stage that featured a rep featured Republican leaders like Michigan GOP chair Christina Caramo, U.S. Rep. John Molinar, and state Senator Lana Theus. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, by the way, I'm hoping that we'll have way more rallies because the weather is starting to warm up hopefully soon uh and when it's warmer weather we'll have way more people and i i know that the weather um stopped some people from coming out because there's a lot of elderly people in this area and obviously if you're elderly you don't want to risk being in cold wet outdoors for hours and so again hopefully there'll be more rallies i will cover them and i will continue to improve Every time I go out, every time I do one of these videos, I learn something new. And so hopefully I can just get better at bringing you guys what's really going on at these rallies. So we're wanting to push back because we don't want this company here, said Lori Brock, 58, who hosted the rally at Majestic Frisian's Horse Farm in Green Charter Township. Goshen Inc. plans to build $2.3 billion electric vehicle battery plant, parts plant that will create, yeah, whatever. Um, residents and Michigan Republicans have mobilized against the project, citing concerns about Goshen's ties to China and the possible environmental impact of the 500-acre battery park in Green Charter Township in Big Rapids. So, they mentioned it kind of in the middle of the, the article, which the middle is the least read, but I read it all, of course. I don't like communism. That's a big thing. I don't want our rivers to be polluted. I don't want our air to be polluted. This is a beautiful country. I don't want it torn down, said Dick Clark, 64, who lives roughly six miles away in Barton Township. Chris Ward from Green Charter Township said she's concerned about the effects of the environment and the water and the politics of it all. Goshen is a U.S.-owned subsidiary, a... Chinese battery company. Okay, the publicly held company established its headquarters in Silicon Valley area in 2012. Ownership is a key issue for opponents who say the plant is linked to the Chinese Communist Party. National security concerns were mentioned by most speakers Saturday, including Karamo, former U.S. Ambassador Joseph Sella, and a video message from conservative commentator Glenn Beck. To think that they, China, will set up a battery factory in our state and they will just play by the rules. That makes no sense whatsoever. And again, it's so much worse than them just buying our land. We are giving them money. We're bribing them to buy it from us. 
Despite what any current politicians may say, there is no communist plot within Goshen to make Big Rapids a center to spread communism, he said in an April 5th informational meeting. That was Chuck Thelen. Goshen submitted the project to the Committee of Foreign Investment for a review, but they wouldn't give all the information, so that review is bull. For Brock, she also wants to protect her 140-acre horse farm, a dream 25 years in the making, from being near a manufacturing site. I thought I was standing alone for a long time, and we're not, she said, pointing to the crowd on her lawn, because if this stuff comes through and poisons everything, all my animals, we have to leave. If it, yeah, if it comes and poisons everything, we'll all have to leave. All the way down the river, we'll be blighted. Which blighted land the government can buy much cheaper. A map of the project site shows the battery plant will run along the 18 mile road, stretching. Okay. Felon also stressed Goshen will comply with all local, state, and federal environmental regulations. I've heard and read dozens of speculation, topics, and scare tactics really designed to make people believe that Goshen will destroy the environment. Nothing can be further from the truth. Okay. I'm going to go right here really quick and I'm going to shout out Status Coup News because they have been the only ones covering East Palestine, Ohio. Uh, if you noticed, it's not on mainstream media anymore. And most of the stuff that they're saying was never on mainstream media. This is what could happen. Uh, fatal toxins. Oh, this is detected in Indiana Plastics Fire, which that's the recycling fire that just happened uh, a couple weeks ago. And Nuego is getting a recycling center. But they talk about uh, East Palestine right here. Residents' tongue goes numb when entering the house. Um, Nor Norfolk Southern ordered East Palestine controlled burn. This channel is lung injury diagnosed five miles from East Palestine, Rick. This channel is doing an excellent job at showing what happens when a disaster a chemical disaster happens. The EPA will abandon you. These people have been abandoned. It is devastating. So pray for them because they're still dealing with the contamination. They'll be dealing with it for years. And the government left them high and dry. Um, another another um, channel is called Squirrel Tribe. So check her out too. They're both covering East Palestine, Ohio. That's the worst case scenario that can happen. Do you think that... Well, I'm not going to go there. It's absolutely terrifying. This comes out of 9 and 10 news uh, on the 22nd. Politicians speak out against proposed Goshen EV battery plant. A rally brought hundreds of people to Macosta County to protest the EV battery plant. People from across the state, including politicians, showed up to a horse ranch in Green Charter Township to voice concerns about the proposed battery plant and the company behind it. It's absolutely terrifying when you read the Articles of Association for Goshen, where they swear allegiance to the communist Chinese Communist Party, Michigan Republican Chair Christina Caramo admits. So, any talk that this company is not controlled by the CCP is a flat-out lie. Concerns over Goshen Inc.'s ties with the CCP rose after people pointed out the company's Articles of Association on the business website that says the company will carry out party activities in accordance with the Constitution of the Communist Party of China. A number of Republican lawmakers spoke during Saturday's rally, including State Senator Lana Theas from Brighton, Congressman John Molinar, and Michigan Republican Christina Caramo. They explained their worries and called out Senate Appropriations Committee that approved $175 million. It's a historic mistake, while other businesses and economies are moving away from China. For Michigan to depend our economic growth strategy on China, it's just the wrong strategy, Congressman Molinar states. Along with issues over the company's ties to the CCP, speakers at the rally also raised environmental concerns. It's obvious that there are issues here that haven't been fully thought out through, and people deserve better than that. It's governmental malfeasance to just shove this type of thing through using taxpayer dollars, Senator Theas acknowledges. During Governor Gretchen Whitmer's visit to Cadillac Friday, she said it's safer for the plant to be in Macosta County than to get the materials shipped from a foreign government. It's better for our homeland security for us to have this technology be built, being built here by Michiganders. So I reject a lot of the information that's out there. I think it's dangerous and I think it's for a political purpose, Governor Whitmer claims. This is what we're up against. 
Senator Theus disagreed with Governor Whitmer's statement and says they there were better options the Appropriations Committee could have chosen. We don't need to be partner with the Chinese Communist Party to create these things, and we shouldn't be. While the back and forth is expected to continue one way or another, the plan is not a done deal yet. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation could still decide not to give Goshen the funding. I mean, give me a break. This is the power that's behind this whole thing. The MEDC. Who is Whitmer's right hand, you know? It, it's the fist that's gonna... You're gonna eat your veggies and all. Yeah, I agree with eating veggies. I do not agree with corporate welfare and what the MEDC is pushing on us, obviously. Um, let's see, I have one more from Wood TV 8 and then I'm going to get into the video of the Senate Appropriations Committee, and so you can hear for yourself what the locals are concerned about. And it's not the one-third of the concern. It's, it's three-thirds, okay? Fire, environment, China. Not just China. Rally protests plan for Big Rapids EV battery plant. Just two days after Michigan lawmakers, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your Chinese company and go back across the pond and go dig your own place up, said Stephen Prawl, a protester at Saturday's event. Yes. Cute goat. Many people who came to the rally voiced, voiced their concerns about Goshen's ties to China, as well as the environmental impact the facility would have. While Goshen is based in California, its parent company is based in China. We don't want it here. It's dangerous. We're zoned agricultural, and they're trying to rezone our property. That's nothing. There's nothing that's been truthful about this, protester Lori Brock said. Um, we need every Michigander to join us and reject the CCP presence in our state and in our country, says Christina Caramo. They need to go back to China. I mean, look at how they abuse their own citizens. Look what they're doing to the, the I can't say that, Uyghur. Muslims, I've heard the word a million times, I'm sorry. They, yes, they have slave labor. Why would we trust these people? Yeah, and the Green, uh, Greenville. There is a Chinese company in Greenville, and then there are complaint after complaint after complaint uh, about being how they're treated. Um, there's different concerns, different rules being broken, and nobody does anything about it. All right. We have an appropriations committee. We're going to check this out. It's important to see what our, our locals are saying, what our, the people that the grassroots are saying. It should start very, very soon. Um, the grassroots is what started this, and Republicans came to help. I, I, that needs to be said. Good morning. The Senate Appropriations Committee will be called to order. Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Chair Anthony. Here. Senator McCann. Here. Senator McDonald Rivet. Here. Senator Cherry. Here. Senator Baer. Here. Senator Santana. Here. Senator Shink. Here. Senator Irwin. Here. Senator Hertel. Here. Senator Kavanaugh. Here. Senator Kleinfeld. Here. Senator McMorrow. Here. Senator Camilleri. Here. Senator Bumstead. Here. Senator Albert. Here. Senator DeMoose. Here. Senator Heisinga. Here. Senator Altman. And Senator Tice. And Madam Chair, you have 19 members present. Do you have a quorum? Thank you so much. All right, so welcome again to our meeting today. Um, we will be addressing a legislative transfer request, 2023 number one. Um, so we do have a number of individuals who will be wishing to speak. So I want you to lay out a little bit of ground rules since this is the largest number of individuals that um, have come before this body in terms of this term. And that should say something right there, should it not? And uh, real quick, one more thing. The Midwesterner showed that this meeting they had slotted for 15 minutes. So they were really hoping that no one would show up and, and voice their concerns. Um, just want to remind everyone about the yellow cards that are near uh, the double doors. So we're asking if you do wish to speak to please fill out one of those cards. Um, in the interest of time, because there are a, uh, a variety of committees that are um, meeting today, both policy and appropriations committee meeting. So we will need to limit any public comments to three minutes apiece. 
um, and as always, uh, written testimony per our rules uh, that we adopted earlier this year is preferred. Those will be uh, an official record of this committee. So please remember just to get any of those written. Why was that? Why was it preferred to have it written instead of because you don't want people to see physical bodies, different ideas? Like, that's some more shady stuff to me. Like, that's not transparency. And comments to our clerk before you leave today. All right. Uh, we'll start off by inviting Corey and Michael to come forward to give a summary of uh, the remaining portion of Legislative Transfer Request 2023-1. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Corey Savino here with Michael Syracuse. Um, the package before you is two transfers totaling $175 million uh, from the SOARS fund. Uh, that $125 million is going to the Critical Industry Program and $50 million is going to the Michigan Strategic Site Readiness Program. Uh, this is for the, all for the project for GOSHA and the right Gosha. place in, to construct a new battery campus. And uh, if these were approved, there'd be $526 million remaining in the reserve fund. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over for any questions. Thank you. Uh, a good question comes questions up right here. Committee to have Senator Tice. Tice. Sorry, I said your name wrong this whole time. $50 million. So if they don't use all of the $50 million in infrastructure, which I understand is what it's tagged for, what happens to it then? Great question. I don't know. Just fifty million dollars. Um, if if it's unused by the end of the, let me get back. Uh, I'll be, I actually know the answer to oh, that. Yeah. It goes to them, so oh. they have an incentive for not putting that money entirely in infrastructure. Thank you. Oh, it goes to the right place. Well, there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much for answering that. Thank you. Any additional member questions? Okay, well, before we move any further, I did skip one item, which was adopting the minutes from our previous meeting on April 12th. Is there a motion? I see Senator Kavanaugh. Um, without objection, the minutes are adopted. All right. Now, I do we know that we do have a few. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we do have a few folks who want Thank you for not to knowing anything. Um, give remarks again, two to three minutes, but three minutes the, the max. We'll start off with our individuals on Zoom. So I believe we have Gerilyn Strong, who's the chair of the Macosta County Commission. Probably getting some of that money at Are 50 mil. With us via Zoom. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair and fellow senators. Um, I just wanna thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. My name is Gerald Strong. I am the current chairperson of the Macosta County Board of Commissioners. Recall. I am in my 11th year of serving and I am proud to represent the people of Macosta County. You don't. One thing I need to stress to you is on February 16th of this year, the Macosta County Board of Commissioners unanimously adopted a resolution reaffirming our support of this project. Selling us out. We collectively, we represent the entire county. <sighs> On the Recall. other hand, you have heard from a small but vocal group of opponents, along with a group of people I have called professional picketers. All of them think that they speak for our county. They do not. There are approximately 40,000 people in Macosta County, and the above group, probably less than 50 of them, were residents of Macosta County. I've talked to several people in Macosta County, and at each of my individual meetings, I repeatedly ask if they had any objections to the Goshen plant. I have not had one negative comment made to me in my, those that I represent. Hmm. Uh, Why haven't you done a survey? We need facts. We need data. I don't they, care who I you've talked to. I want you to have. to show strong public support for the battery component plant because some of those that have spoken up have received threats against themselves, their families, and their businesses. I gotta say really quick, I have no idea what this person is talking about. I was on Ask Big Rapids Facebook page for a little while, and the most aggressive people, the, the meanest 
people, the ones that are not using facts and logic and um, going after other people's ideas, but rather going after them, the people themselves, coming after me, the ones that I worried about the most when I went to the first meeting that I've ever been to in my life, a Big Rapids board meeting, the people I was worried about were for the plant. And any concerns that I stated, they, they just, they were the ones, unfortunately, that were very un unprofessional, aggressive. So I don't understand what she's talking about. This is a great opportunity for the people of Macosta County and the surrounding area. The direct economic boost will stretch from Grand Rapids to Cadillac and Scottville to Mount Pleasant. It will create 2,350 good jobs, better wages, good jobs. and great benefits that will give our families a chance for a nicer, li nicer living in general. Read your script. Not only now, but for generations to follow. This will also create an estimated 5,000 additional jobs statewide in the supply chain and service professionals. This project will lead to significant opportunities to participate in the cutting edge of technology for our local schools, our intermediate school districts and Ferris State University, which we have here in Big Rapids. I believe this project will be critical to the future of our region and our state. I'm asking you as the chairperson and a representative of the people of Macosta County to please support this Goshen battery plant for the good of the people of Macosta County. Yeah, again, our you have to read your script. needs this growth and economic growth. Our children, grandchildren and beyond will benefit from a plan of the future. And again, I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak and thank you again. Thank you, Madam Chair, appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, I think we also have Jim Chapman, uh, Green Township Supervisor. Here comes some lies. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, welcome. Again, you have three minutes. Professional yes, picketers. Um, hopefully I'm a little more relaxed than I was last time here because I now realize that so many of you folks served as township officials at some point in your career. You understand the issues of representing your community, both those that um, are vocal and those that are a silent majority and recognizing the difference between those who are your community and those that are from, come from elsewhere. Um, our meetings, we've been able to determine that roughly 25% of the people coming to our meetings are township residents. About 25% of them are from Acosta County and most of the rest of them had to use Google Maps to even be able to find. It's such a lie. That is such a lie. Have to use Google Maps. It's so insulting. It's like, and this it concerns every Michigander and it, it, because of taxpayer dollars for one. So money, people care about money, right? They're taking your money and they're spending it on something that the locals don't want. But everybody should be able to have a say that lives in Michigan because it's our taxpayer dollars. But not only that, but then you got Nuego County and Oso Osceola County all the way down. We've said it time and time again, all the way to Lake Michigan, everybody should be concerned. And we have a right to be concerned. You don't have to live in Green Charter Township or Macosta County to have your voice heard, to have a right to speak. And that was another thing on Ask Big Rapids Facebook page. They kept hounding me where you live. Oh, you're not from Macosta County or Green Township. So what? So I should shut up? That makes no sense. I'm from Nuego County. I'm, a, I'm right next to you guys. And this will affect me if something were to happen. It will. So we have a right to speak. And you're just a straight up liar anyway, saying only 25% of Green Township are against it. You guys should be doing surveys. You guys should know, you should have the data to prove it, but you don't because you're just talking out your ass. Find us. I need to evaluate what's going on. I need to look at all the options. And I think we've done that. <laughs> I think we've worked hard at that. We look at the issues that have been presented and I apologize if I move around too much. But we look at the issues such as China, which Goshen says they're not. Um, and then what's collaborating evidence? I was a police officer for 37 years. In God, we trust everybody else. We check for wants and warrants. Um, so we collaborate everything. What do we see? We see the MEDC has done research investigation on this company and it said and cleared them. 
We see that the right place has hired an independent company to see if they support MEDC's findings, and they do. Of course. We see that work together. Germany is a controlling interest uh, in the company and the controlling um, membership on their board of directors. We see no sign of CCP in their Fremont, California uh, facility. We see no sign of um, CCP in their Cleveland, Ohio. This, this we call collaborating evidence. Environment. Goshen says they're a good yeah. steward of the environment. Oh, well, Goshen said they're a good steward. We see they have ISO certification. We see that um, oh. consumers' power actually had to certify to them that the power they were being supplied came from sustainable sources. I'm going to do a lot of storytelling on this uh, consumers' energy in the foreseeable future. I just read an article about putting a meter on your hot water heater so that you could save energy because we don't have enough energy and yet we're gonna put this huge plant in. It it makes no damn sense. And this 100% sustainable, it's all about credits. And if you look into the credit system, it's basically just, it's lies to say that they're being green. It's a whole subterfuge, okay? It is. All right, we see um, no signs. We see the eagle. Now, some people say that eagle's a little over enthusiastic. I say more be over efficient, but I want somebody over efficient looking after my community. All of that's there. Again, collaborating evidence. There's a question of good paying jobs. Now, they're not naming a number. They're not hiring for two years, and who knows what the economy is going to be in two years. Oh, now they're not but naming a number. The LG plant, which I had the opportunity to tour in Holland. That's skilled labor. Skilled labor doesn't come cheap. I look at the local employers and I see um, ice mounting paying 26 bucks an hour. That's a good paying job. And by the way, you take 26 bucks an hour, you multiply it by 80 hours a week, you multiply it by 2,350 jobs, you have a $4.8 million payroll every 80 two hours weeks a week? in my community in my region. And That's Jim? important. Sorry, 80 hours? Uh, it, that we have reached three minutes. So uh, in the interest of time, if you just want to wrap up with one final sentence. Yes, ma'am. That would be Friend, comparing you wrap um, up? threats and innuendos to facts. And the facts have to win. And, and they will. And we've done. And that's why I feel that this is important to our community and a good in the opportunity end. for my residents. The facts will win. Thank you. The truth Thank will you for win. joining us. Always. Were there any other individuals on Zoom wishing to speak? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. All right. Um, so we do have several cards. So uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to ask uh, two folks to come up at once. We'll continue to have the three minutes, uh, if possible, for remarks. If possible. No, uh, you get three minutes. We will start off with Cheryl, and I am going to probably, oh, one moment. We're going to read cards from last week's meeting. Again, this was not on the agenda. We want to make sure that the cards from last week's were read in. Yeah, so last week. Clerk? Uh, Jason Cruz is putting in a testimony card opposing the bill. Eddie Downey is opposing the transfer request. Teresa Almishweiler is opposing the transfer request. Mike Lux is opposing the transfer request. Marjorie Steele is opposing the transfer request. And Joe Sella is also opposing the transfer request. Okay, so you see there tons of opposing. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I, I'd like to welcome uh, Joseph Sella from Ypsilanti and Russ Jennings from Michigan Center to come forward, both wishing to speak and opposing the bill. Yep, and then they still passed it. Yeah. And we're just paid picketers. We're a minority, but a very small uh, vocal minority. I don't think so, guys. We need to prove it, so we need to keep spreading awareness. Jackson, Michigan is a long ways from Makosha County. And I was one of many that came from Jackson, Michigan, unpaid, uh, to peacefully protest uh, the Gosha plant uh, and that was conducted in in Big Rapids. I had a prepared statement here, but I just wanted to respond uh, to the Green Township Supervisor and the Magosha County uh, Commission Chair. Um, 
I have information that needs to be brought out, hopefully, through the appropriate person, that there is an opportunity for this battery plant to be built by an American company. Why are we even considering, why would the county, the township, or the state of Michigan even consider um, a Chinese-based company if, in fact, there is an American company willing to build this type of plant, I believe, in that same area. I just want to add another thing, too. I know a couple of state representatives and some other people um, went to uh, Magosha County um, and did some door knocking to check. And out of 30 doors, only six people were um, in, uh, in favor of this plant. So I, I think that there's probably a misrepresentation from the eagerness of economic development from the Green Township Supervisor in the Magosha County Macosta Chair County. for economic development when I don't think it really uh, speaks to the citizens of their area. And like I said, we are concerned about this in southern Michigan um, just as much as they are in uh, Green Township in Magosha County. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Real quick, that's why we need to make sure, though, because he said there's an American EV battery company that would build there. So that's why we also need to reiterate the environmental concerns because it doesn't... It, American company would be better, of course, but I don't want an EV battery plant on the river at all because of the potential damage that it could cause. And if the worst were to happen, no one would help us. I know that. So I don't want an EV battery plant. It doesn't matter if it's American or not. Not to mention, like I said before, it's a, serv a car as a service is not what I want. I want a product. I want to buy it and it's mine and I do what I want with it. And if I say something that the company who made my car doesn't like, I still have windows that roll down, okay? So I, I don't want electric vehicles. The supply chain issues with lithium, there's just... Electric vehicle battery plant is not right for the area. So we need to make sure that people know it's not just about China. Good morning, Madam Chairman. Thank you for uh, the time to be here, and Senators, thank you uh, as well. If the Goshen vote proceeds uh, this morning and passes, this will be the first time uh, elected officials and others uh, supporting uh, uh, have voted to jeopardize our national security and the security of our state. Um, both parties are responsible, looking back in the history, and they will be held to account uh, in the future. Our intelligence agencies of the United States for many years have known of the existential threat uh, that the Pub People's Republic of China and the Chinese Communist Party present to us. They issued that in an unclassified bulletin that you all have received uh, from myself uh, and Ambassador Hookstra as we continue our work from the uh, Michigan uh, China Economic Security Review Group, and it will continue. Um, that directly said that any such deals as this uh, should be considered as a subnational incursion uh, by the PRC. It's a threat uh, and of the CCP and ought not to be agreed to. Uh, that has uh, been <laughs> made uh, abundantly clear on a number of occasions to all of you. Uh, CFIUS, that should have been a checkbox on day one, Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States to run a review. Uh, Goshen said they're doing it, they're not. Uh, they refused to disclose uh, the uh, officers of their parent company known as Guo Xuan that needs passport numbers, that needs dates of birth, that needs where they live, and it needs their names. I would uh, recommend you ask Mr. Thalen why that's not happening. Uh, and any number of people involved with the project uh, are operating, I would propose, uh, outside of the FARA statute, the Foreign Agents Registration Act, which is required if you're an agent and having contact with foreign entities. Red flags are everywhere, Senators. Um, companies such as this um, have to abide by the national intelligence laws, number seven through 13, articles seven through 13, uh, easily found on Google. Uh, despite the fact that they say we're a subsidiary, we're in California, it does not matter. It's an appendage of the Hefei-based China, uh, Guo Xuan, uh, High Tech Company Limited, and their parent company, Nanjing Holdings. Um, this morning comes news that six PRC, CCP stations, police stations, have been located in our country. They surveil, report, and collect themselves. United Front Workgroup effort. 
Uh, just last week, they arrested 40 people in New York City affiliated with an undercover PRC CCP police, police station in New York. A subnational incursion, ladies and gentlemen. This is a perilous decision that's about to be made. Uh, and our national security and our state security is in jeopardy. Our work is going to continue on this. FOIAs will be coming very soon. And uh, I appreciate have to the beg. time uh, to be here with you today. It was an honor. Please give us the information. So Please right, don't redact we it. We will have Chuck Thalen from North American, money. the North American Vice President of Goshen and Kyle Voos uh, from Paris, Michigan. Sorry, you had to sit next to Chuck Thalen. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Thank morning. you so much for the time. As stated, my name is Chuck Thalen. I'm Vice President of North Thalen. American Manufacturing for Goshen, Inc., which is incorporated out of Fremont, California since 19, or 2014. Uh, I do have a statement that was prepared by our attorneys here in Grand Rapids because we did have a, 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 an event last night, and it reads as such. Goshen is pleased to share the news we received from the Department of Treasury yesterday regarding a voluntary committee on foreign investment in the United States, or CFIUS, filing that we submitted in March for a proposed plan in the Southern United States. Following almost four week review processed by the committee, which is a nine panel committee in the federal uh, area using all the intelligence agencies within the United States, CFIUS determined that our proposed transaction was not subject to further review. We may proceed with the proposed transaction. Hmm. Our voluntary filing for Big Rapids area plant was submitted on April 13th, as I had indicated previously, and we ex expect a similar review period and outcome. So the CFIUS for the Southern United States has already been passed. Wow. For the Southern United States. Any, any further questions on that? <laughs> okay. um, so with that, uh, obviously, we've, we've had three major contentions. Uh, one would be the relationship with the, the Chinese government and reminding everybody we are a global company with locations in Singapore, India, Vietnam, Germany, United States, and as well, obviously, Japan and China. Uh, so, yes, the company was founded by a Chinese entrepreneur, um, a very intelligent entrepreneur, hmm. and it is now 247 percent owned by VW, which I think was already stated prior. Zhang Li, I so think, is who started the company. He's the only billionaire in the Thank region you. of China. We have, uh, we have one member of Hefei China. Senator Tice. The CFIUS review, was it done for Goshen Inc. or Goshen High Tech? Very good question. So the, the CFIUS review was done for Goshen Inc., but all the information for Goshen High Tech was included. So you and included that it, all the birth dates and all of the social security numbers, and, and they, did a, they did a thorough review of Goshen High Tech, which, by the way, is all the information you presented us. The map you gave us shows that you're headquartered in China. Correct. It says Goshen High Tech at the bottom. Mm -hmm. The stocks that you're talking about with respect to VW, they've already made notice that they're going to end up selling them. So. The, it's going to be primarily Chinese owned within a few months for the record. Yep. Good All job. All that stuff is public information. Yep. I, I am extraordinarily frustrated that the information that you're providing is misleading. Yes. I understand uh, your desire to help your community. Uh, I think this is <laughs> the wrong way to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Chuck, did you have any, you had oh, 30 more seconds left on your time. Okay, um, another question about financing I'd like to address very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we are publicly traded yeah, in you're both being China misleading. and in Switzerland. And between those two entities, um, they are, I'll say, you, collaborative but unique. And the financing <laughs> was our question, where are we getting the money from? And that IPO that we held in Switzerland last year re resulted in about $695 million. And that is what's earmarked to start up our finances here for North America. So and of course our money. Switzerland. Thank our you. taxpayer dollars to bribe you I to come here and pay to buy our land. I appreciate being here. Oh, here. Thank you. Is this on? Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Kyle Luce. I'm the Barton Township Supervisor, and the Barton Township is the municipality directly to the west of Green Township. We border from north to south. Uh, when this news first came out, our township residents seemed excited and uh, had a lot of questions about the project. Uh, our board itself was excited and questioning the process. We decided to survey our citizens, sent out a survey to all of them, all the property owners that live and don't live in our area, 
and we've came back today with an 85% opposed opposition number in our township widespread. They did a survey. There are a few people that are in favor of the project, uh, and most of them uh, stated that they didn't have any knowledge of the project. Uh, our citizens are concerned with the time frame that's going on here. Uh, the timing seems to be uh, sped up exponentially to what, in our opinion, is to try to seal the deal and get this done before people have a chance to speak out, residents have a chance to speak out, and individuals. Uh, the fine senators are, are digging up information daily about the CCP involvement. Mr. Salen continues to claim that there is no CCP involvement, um, and all of the records and uh, the information coming in does, does not support his claim. Um, we're very concerned as a small municipality in the middle of middle Michigan. We're a primarily a farm community, and we're concerned about our environment. We're concerned about Lake Michigan. We're concerned about all of the Great Lakes. The Muskegon River runs is a mile from this proposed site. Um, we're very concerned. Thank you, Kyle. And as a township, I'm here to to speak and ask you to either turn this down or table it until further investigation could be done. I thank you for your time. Thank you, thank Kyle. You. That was thank very good. Both. And good job on actually doing a survey. Uh, Everybody Schaefer should do a survey. Vassar, Michigan, and Cheryl Vedito from Jackson. Both wishing to speak and opposing the bill. Communist. Sorry, I don't want to skip any, but it, it doesn't have the same feature as uh, YouTube where I can actually see and skip ahead when they're starting to speak. So, my name is Cheryl Vidito, and uh, Okay. All right. So, again, my name is, is Cheryl Vidito, and I think that any Chinese communist plant buying up 700 acres of Michigan land is a concern to all citizens throughout the state, not just those in the Big Rapids and surrounding areas. Thank so you. I just, that's from listening to other people speak. So I did prepare a statement, and this is just from a general layperson's perspective, but I'm not in favor of the Goshen plant. So... This CCP controlled company represents communism and is a threat to our way of life and our God given and constitutional freedoms. We don't want the CCP here by way of the Goshen plant as they have no regard for the value and dignity of human life. It is a known fact that they will slaughter and enslave their own people and in an ongoing manner yet today they harvest the organs of those who dare to hold any religious beliefs. We are setting up a base for spies in our own backyard next to army barracks and airports. In this way, they pose a serious national security risk to our country, and the CCP has made it abundantly clear that they want to overthrow the United States without firing a shot and one primary way to do that is by buying up our country's precious land and natural resources. This is why the CCP Goshen plant will not agree to a lease, but will only continue forward with this project if they can buy and consume 700 acres of our land and to add insult to injury, our U.S. citizens' tax dollars to the tune of $715 million will be used to set up this communist-run plant and, the tax, and be tax-free at the taxpayer's expense for the next 30 years. Crazy. This is just completely wrong on many levels. Yep. Taxpayers will foot the bill for roads, rails, and waterways they will be needed, that will be needed and consumed by the communist-run Goshen plant, and we will have to deal with all of the resulting air, land, and water pollution that will befall the big rapids and surrounding areas as a result. We should be partnering with other countries that are not bent on destroying our way of life. China is by far not the only solution here, as was brought up previously. 
So I would say in closure, please think about your children and your grandchildren. Do not continue to make ongoing deals with China to sell out the future of our great country by allowing the CCP and Goshen Run plant to consume one of our most precious and limited commodities, which is our U.S. land. And I want to thank you all for your time and thank consideration. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shirley? That was good. Good morning. Good morning. I, too, have written, so I will read. <laughs> I, Shirley Schaefer, am asking you to vote no on the funding of $175 million total for the Goshen Incorporation battery plant. Goshen is a Chinese communist controlled company. This company pledges allegiance to the Co Chinese Communist Party and should be determined as a threat to our national security. All political power is inherent in the people. As one of the people of the 50 American states, as seen in the bills and declarations of rights of the 50 state constitutions, Republican and Foreman having all political power, I am serving you with this notice so that you and your agents as the trustees and servants of the people may provide immediate due care by way of necessity. As trustees, servants, and agents of the people, it is your absolute duty and responsibility to ensure our rights are always protected. This includes our inherent guaranteed right to ensure protection and preservation of our natural resources, those of land, air, and water. The Michigan Constitution, Article 5, Section, excuse me, Article 4, Section 52, Natural Resources Conservation, Pollution, Impairment, Destruction, the Conservation and Development of the Natural Resources of the State, are hereby declared to be of paramount public concern in the interest of health, safety, and general welfare of the people. The legislature shall provide for the protection of the air, water, and other natural resources of the state from pollution, impairment, and destruction. Please seek immediate investigation into the Goshen Battery Plant and see the plan set for waste and other runoff from this site does it meet the township hazard mitigation plan? Will lithium arrive by rail or truck? Great question. Will components be sourced only where it can be documented that they are causing no additional hazardous byproducts from manufacturing or mining? That's impossible. What zoning ordinances sections apply? There are many questions need, that need to be answered. Thank you for your time this morning. Because lithium Thank and you, cobalt, you, which you, supposedly you. cobalt is not going to be at this location somehow. Right. I don't know how you make cathodes and anodes uh, without it. Lori Skibo from the Michigan Republican Party in Holly. And Christina Caramo. Uh, I don't know if also representing the Republican Party, but from Oak Park. Hmm. Christina Caramo. Welcome. I've been hearing a lot about her lately. I didn't know anything about her until this year. Hi, this my last name is Lori Sebo. I am an executive committee member for the Republican Party on the state level. I also sit as an executive committee member for District 9. And I also sit as an executive committee member for Oakland County Republican Party as well. Um, in part of me being here uh, as an Oakland County resident, Oakland County has recently, as of late as last year, voted in the World Economic Forum into Oakland County. As I was having a meeting with my Oakland County commissioner, a Republican, I asked him why he voted to bring the World Economic Forum into Oakland County, knowing their significant ties to the Chinese Communist Party. He said to me, and I quote, from a manufacturing standpoint, China is kicking our bleep. What I reiterated back to him was, if true, the reasons are because of the continued theft of American taxpayer-funded research, both inside of our American universities and our, Amer our American businesses, in which the CCP steals American ideas and innovation. Mm. Any advantage that the Chinese currently may have 
is simply definitive of American innovation, not Chinese innovation. Because you can't Worse, innovate in our communist American rule. American politicians and American corporations who look to profit and line their pockets at the expense of our national security. Both political parties have profited hundreds of millions of dollars in helping the Chinese Communist Party buy Hennage's automotive found just less than a mile away from Oakland University, in which U.S. military secrets are reported that have been uh, manufacturing for our military jets and are sold to foreign adversaries. Yep, data, number Just one asset short in the years world, later, data. The same Chinese Communist Party unleashed a worldwide bioweapon. The Chinese Com Communist Party continues right now, today, to manufacture Chinese military equipment just a mile away from Oakland University, while passive politicians sit quietly by, or worse, help spread their communist propaganda. The second point I indicated to him was, the CCP uses forced labor, a modern day form of slavery which allows them to stay competitive by manufacturing and selling products because they incur no or little labor costs. Our American DNA rejects the use of slavery here in Oakland County, the state of Michigan, and across our great nation and worldwide. Thirdly, the CCP are guilty of unimaginable human rights abuses. Unimaginable. The industry of the drug cartels, human trafficking, and harvesting of live organ hey, Lori, I'm gonna have to ask you to wrap up a little bit. I'm gonna ask you to enough. please reject this in a united front to show your in a united front that we all stand together against the human abuses. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, good job. Hi, my name is Christina Caramo, and actually the car I submitted, I submitted on behalf of myself, because even though I am chair of the Michigan Republican Party, I'm actually here as a Michigan resident. This is not a partisan issue. The concern for our environment, the concern for our national security, I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent, Green Party, or whatever, it impacts us all the same. So I'm actually going to read from the Articles of Association from Goshen, LTD, um, the thing about it is they can claim whatever they want because the individuals here from Goshen do not even live in Michigan. So they will not live with the consequences if the Muskegon River happens to be contaminated. They will not live with the consequences of Thank a you. communist Chinese party entity in our state. They just stand a profit from it. Yep. So what happened to people over profits? So from there, I'm going to read Article 4, I mean Chapter 4, Article 114. The company set up the Goshen High Tech Company LTD Committee of the Communist Party of China, and in quotes in parentheses it says party committee, so moving forward if you hear party committee that refers to the Communist Party of China. The party committee shall have one secretary and several other members. In principle, the chairman and secretary of the party committee shall be the same person. Qualified members of the party committee, again, Communist Party of China, may be elected to the members of the board of directors, the supervisory committee of the senior management through legal procedure and qualified members of the board of the directors. The supervisory committee and the senior management may be elected to the party committee. Again, that's Communist Party of China. So any claims that this company is not tied to the Communist Party of China is a flat out lie. It's in their articles of association. I continue. In accordance with the relevant regulations <laughs> and procedures. In addition, a commission for She's discipline good at inspection shall be set up in accordance with regulation. Article 115, the party committee, again, the Communist Party of China, of the company shall perform its duty in accordance with the, wait for it, constitution of the Communist Party of China mm -hmm. and other party regulations. One, ensure and supervise the implementation of the party's Guidances, guidelines. Oh, so in America, you guys are going to sit here and bring a company here and give them our tax dollars who swears in their articles of association to be compliant with the Chinese Communist Party? Really? Okay. It and goes you see on to Republicans say, are worried about and the China. policies of the company implement major strategy decisions of the CPC Central Committee. Again, the Communist Party of China. Got it. And the State Council, as well as the relevant important work of the party organization at the higher level. And it goes on where they swear allegiance to the Youth Communist League. It, it, the, the question before us is here, what is more important to you, the state of Michigan or your political careers? What do you care more about, money or our lives? Because your children will deal with the consequences of the state, not just the people opposed to this. It is unbelievable that we're even here in this moment 
in front of Michigan elected officials who are even considering giving millions of our tax, tax dollars to a I, hostile government. Thank you. You're, I, if I could just ask you to wrap up your comments. Well, time if you up. choose to give these funds to, to Goshen, you are a Benedict Arnold. You wow. are a traitor to this republic. You are a traitor to your children's future. Thank you. Wow, okay. strong thank words. Thank you. Benedict Arnold. All right, next coming up, we have uh, Hannah Siraz. And if I mispronounced that last name, I apologize. This next and group Marjorie is Steele. awesome. Big Rapids. You Marjorie guys really need to Rapids, listen to this. To Everybody is awesome, but bill. these two really know what they're talking about. As an elected official and a lifelong resident of Big Rapids, Michigan, I am gravely disappointed that we are here today and that Goshen is even on the agenda. I am gravely disappointed that our representatives are serving the demands of our governor over the request of our citizens. I can, however, attest to the only status right now that our community is now united in ways they would have never been before. They do not want this. Our township has mailed surveys, to which I will make clear, anything over 50% is considered majority. Over 50% have responded opposed with drastic concerns. This is not a small group of protesters, as our dishonest local representation states. Amen. They are also being currently recalled. We have numerous, we've held numerous meetings, and the people have spoken. They do not want this. We don't. Quite frankly, this is not what any of us were elected to do. I am certain that when taking an oath, giving American dollars to a foreign company that puts our national security at risk was not in question. To potentially bring environmental catastrophes to our beautiful Great Lakes state. Let me be clear. When the Big Rapids Township Attorney reached out to Goshen to request information needed to submit our CFIUS review, they denied that request and filed their own declaration, which is not nearly as thorough. In mm. addition, the constant claim of being a publicly traded company, please understand that this is not traded on the American stock market. This company is currently undergoing federal investigations, potentially being linked to the Taliban, a company that currently has a lean out against them. I do not understand the urgency to vote on something that even our governor cannot say whether or not she supports. Our community is outraged. I know for certain the recalls will not stop at the local jurisdiction level. Thousands of Michiganders will be watching today, and their decisions will be in mind for the next election season. I know you're all receiving daily emails and phone calls. I know you're under pressure. I know you've probably been coerced. I beg of you to do what is right here, even if corruption is knocking at your door. I make one final request, and I beg of you to postpone this vote, or vote no if you must vote. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you that so was much. awesome. That was good. Good morning. It takes courage Marjorie Steele. to do what they're doing. My family and I live in the Rapids on a property that was homesteaded by my father 40 years ago. I'm angry. I'm angry that this vote was slipped into the agenda late yesterday with as little information as possible so that people like me wouldn't know what was happening. Boom. I'm angry that you, our elected officials, have ignored my community's pleas to table this vote until some small semblance of due diligence can be performed. I'm angry that you have ignored the bipartisan warnings of Senator Jonathan Lindsay and Ambassadors Hoekstra and Sello earlier this week and their pleas to evaluate the very clear and present security risks that this project poses to my community to the state of Michigan, and to the nation at large. I'm angry that I've had to explain to Randy Thalen, CEO and president of The Right Place, a veteran developer, what an environmental impact report is, as if he's never heard of one Where before is it? in his life. Where is it? I'm angry that you have entertained the lies brought to you by our local representatives, like Green Township Supervisor Jim Chapman, and his baseless claims that 95% of his constituents are in favor of this project without asking for any receipts. And I am angry that he has accused myself and my neighbors of being paid protesters. Mm -hmm. I assure you, I have lost money on my advocacy on this issue. What you need to know is this. Green Charter Township Supervisor Jim Chapman is officially under recall as we speak. More recalls in both Green and Big Rapids Townships will be underway very soon. Yep. We as a community are systematically cleaning house from corruption, and I can promise you that we will not stop at the local level. We are tired of being abused, and we are not alone. This is not just a Macosta County issue. Townships and counties across the state are uniting, sharing resources, manpower, and grassroots activism. 
your votes today, senators, are lines drawn in the sand. Yep. Every one of you here today who votes in favor of this project, we as a community will consider a black mold that needs to be expunged from our democratic republic. So consider very carefully, members of the committee, Line in the sand. as you choose your vote today, who you choose to serve. Thank you so much for your time. Unfortunately, Thank 10 you. of them chose to serve money All right, over people. We have one final card. Um, Wishing to speak opposing the bill, Larry Finkbinder. Finkbinder, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got one Why more not? we're going to listen to. Welcome. May I be permitted to stand? Sure. I appreciate that. <laughs> as long as it doesn't interfere with our ability to hear you. So the closer you are to the I can speak plenty loud, ma'am. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Welcome. I appreciate being able to stand. I've been sitting far too long driving down here. And it's rather Thank painful you, to Larry. my back. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to congratulate you on being here, but I'd like to update you on a few things that you need to know. First off, Big Rapids Township has Big Rapids City in it. Second off, Green Township has the village of Paris in it. This is Paris, not Big Rapids. I am a resident of Paris. I am an organic vegetable farmer. I have served in the local sheriff's department. I've worked in the hospital. I've spent 10 years in the army. I came home. Hmm. I built a family and a farm. Because there's no place I like will home. give Mr. Thien some level of respect. Anybody that's going to attempt something great has to have that level of respect. But I will also say that it is not the right fit for this community. This community is primarily agriculture, forestry, and recreation. That recreation is water. Water. Yes, we have Ferris State University there, and they have a wealth of knowledge. But this project is not suited for this community. A short walk across the street is the waterways that lead into the Muskegon River. Yep. Any endeavor by man has consequences, yep. intentional or unintentional. A single accident by a semi carrying product to that battery plant can and will put heavy metals in the waterways and in the ground. Yep. Those are not easily cleaned up. They will take centuries. It won't get we done. We produce food. We produce recreation where people hunt and swim. You had a hard time with flint, with lead in the water. It still isn't fixed. What do you think will happen? Eight years. When Paris becomes contaminated, and then Big Rapids, and their water source, and Rogers Heights, and Croton, and Hardy, and Nuego, and all the way down to Muskegon. Yep. Because water flows downstream. Yep. What happens when a battery burns accidentally, because they do that. Becomes airborne, and that dust and heavy metals go up and settle. That comes down, that plume comes down on my land. I am from Green Township. The board has said we polled. They did not. Meetings at 9 in the morning when people have to work and are notified 12 hours prior over the internet. That does not give anybody an opportunity to show up. Excuse me, boss. Can I go to the board meeting? I have to miss my first half of my shift. And if I could just ask you to wrap up because uh, your time is up. Mr. Thien says that this has nothing to do with China. And there may be some levels on which se separated. But we ourselves, our own president, is using sanctions against Russia because economics is a weapon. Money leaving this project going home to China is a weapon. I, okay, thank, thank you again for taking the time, Larry. All right. Thank you to all those people. I got one more video I want to show you. Just quick, very quick, five-minute video if you want to check it out with me. Um, but before I get to that, thank you once again to everybody that had the courage, that took the time to drive two hours to go down there and say no. 
and even though they voted yes to give the money, it ain't over till it's over. We're going to continue fighting against this, and every single person that sees all of these people opposing, and yet they still go through with it, this is this optics. And so we must continue to spread awareness. We must continue to warn our fellow Michiganders about this and, and the Marshall plant. Um, all of these plants that are taking over our farmland, we, people need to know about it. We need to know that we're giving our money to do this. And we also need to know we need food. But real quick to our five minute video. I think I just have to say it like this. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I am worn out. I am fed up. I've had enough. I am tired of exposing corruption, doing our homework, finding, going overseas and having documents translated to make sure they're exactly right, presenting the evidence. We know what's happening, except then once we expose it, nothing happens. Nobody goes to jail. Nobody pays for a damn thing anymore. No consequences. Nothing. Yep, I know. If you and I did half the things that people in Washington do every day, you yep. and I would go to prison. Yep. Clinton got away with it. Even the left knew that the Clinton Foundation was dirty. They sold uranium to our biggest enemy, Russia. Nothing. No. Yep. She can take confidential, top secret emails and put them on her server at her home. Something you and I would go to prison for. Yep. We would be in prison for the rest of our lives. Not a big deal. Benghazi? No. Not only did we show you that we were gun running to a group in Syria that became ISIS, that's what we were doing in Benghazi. Not only that, but just the killing of a U.S. ambassador, and might I point out on Veterans Day, we abandon our troops. Abandon them. Did anything happen? Nope. 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 Mm -mm. Nothing. Nothing. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of, of actually being open and saying, okay, well, let's look into the spying on this presidential candidate. That's a pretty hefty charge. Were they doing it? And then finding out, yes, they were, and nothing happens. <laughs> he was colluding with Russia. My gosh, that should be the biggest scandal of all time if that were true. If it wasn't true, and it was started, and evidence, paperwork even showed that they knew, all the way to the White House. You'd think that would be even a bigger story. Lying to the FISA courts, nothing. Creating an enemies list, nothing. Using our own intelligence agencies to assist in this operation. Spending millions of dollars on a claim they knew that wasn't true. The collusion on Russia, they knew it in, before the president was ever elected. The scandal... The loss of billions of tax dollars in Ukraine, no big deal. The lies and the collusion with the Obama administration in Ukraine, no big deal. Hunter Biden, forget about Burisma. What was that, $7 billion? Ha, ah, who cares? Look at Hunter Biden and his, his uh, father in China. Oh, but we don't have any proof of that. Yes, we do. We have all the proof anyone who cares to be honest needs. We have all the documents on his own frickin' laptop, which had been verified for people that were working with him, who were Democrats that had those, those same emails on their computer. Nothing. The scandal of our Justice Department, the deep state, which I didn't believe in four years ago. My gosh, you've got to be dead and probably voting in the last election if you don't see the deep state. Yep. The corruption of our media, our media telling us to deny our own eyes. There's a car on fire, and they're like, oh, nothing's happening here. It's totally peace. There's a car on fire behind you, but we're not supposed to notice that. Good has been made evil, and evil is made good. They ask you now to 
Don't believe your own eyes. Believe us. Yep, our media our is country corrupt. is being torn apart on the streets by radicals who are marching with no Trump, no Biden, no America signs. But don't worry about that. This is just a peaceful group. Really? Our children are being indoctrinated with all kinds of crap, telling them that they're racist because of the color they were born with. The teachers' unions completely out of control. The lies of Black Lives Matter, Inc., and no one seems to care. No one seems to care that Black Lives Matter is actually a corporation. Right. That Black Lives Matter, on their own manifesto, said they wanted to destroy the nuclear family. But that's all fine. Antifa? No. They're not wild in the streets. That's only an idea. Yeah, kind of like Nazism was an idea. But yet, if you support the Constitution, if you just say, I want a fair and legal count, you're a radical. You're mm -hmm. an anti-government zealot. I've had it. I've had enough. I think that he said it pretty well. I mean, we say over and over and over again what we want and people don't listen. They don't want to listen. We show the truth and people don't want to listen. Or what's worse is that people do listen. We know, we know there's corruption and yet nothing is done about it. So we have to do something about it. And I am happy to be a part of this no Goshen push. And I keep saying it's not over till it's over because it's so important we don't give up, okay? They might have gotten the money, but they have not broken ground yet. It is They have not started building it. We have a chance, but we must keep spreading awareness. And we must do it in a bipartisan manner. It, it doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, um, Libertarian, Green Party, whatever. Whatever parties are out there, all you hear about is the two-party system. But I know there's people out there that are disillusioned with the whole thing, like myself. And so it needs to be a Michigander concern, not a Republican or Democrat concern. And I know that Christina Caramo is Republican and that majority of people that are helping are Republican right now, but that doesn't mean the movement itself is Republican. And so thank you guys for joining me in this Goshen News Roundup. I will continue to do them every week until it's over one way or another. Uh, Monday mornings, 9, 9.30. Try to get on at 9, but usually it's 9.30. Um, I appreciate you joining me. I appreciate your due diligence and wanting to know what's going on. And I hope that we can have more rallies and we can continue this fight until we win. And I have full faith that we will win. In the end, we will win. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate every single one of you. Leave a comment down below uh, what you think is uh, the most egregious thing that's happening with this. Like, what are you upset about the most? And what are you proud of or happy with your community? Um, yeah, just share your thoughts, please, in the comments down below. It helps with the algo, but more than that, I want to know when your your fellow residents, Michiganders, we all want to know that we're not alone in how we're feeling. So thanks again, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow in, an, in another video.